the landmine has been forgotten about and eschewed by the fitness industry. However, new studies suggest that if you want to maximize your muscle growth, you need to be including T-bar exercises within your program. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching. And today we're discussing the T-bar. The T-bar or landmine has long been forgotten about by the fitness industry and to be honest, for some pretty good reasons. First, the T-bar can be pretty difficult to set up. Think about a incline press, where you're just sort of kneeling down and pressing the bar up, or a goblet squat. These exercises can be pretty hard to set up. Getting the bar into position with a relatively heavier load can just be kind of a pain in the ass, as compared to just doing an incline press or doing a regular goblet squat instead. Secondly, and this only applies for the giga chads and super strong gals watching this video, and I know that's pretty much everyone watching, let's be honest. But it can be a little bit difficult in terms of loadability. There's only so much weight you can put on a T-bar before you run out of space. This is much less of a concern with certain barbells than others, and it's only really a concern for people who are pretty strong, but it does limit how much load you can use with the exercises. Third, for a long time, the T-bar was avoided due to limited range of motion, right? When you're doing a T-bar row, for example, the plates will hit your stomach far earlier than the barbell would hit your stomach during, for example, a barbell row. And so you're getting less range of motion at the top of that rep. Finally, compared to like a machine that's super smooth or traditional exercises like free weight exercises like the dumbbell row or the barbell row, T-bar rows have a kind of weird resistance curve where at the bottom it's hardest when the barbell is kind of parallel to the ground. And then as the barbell lifts and lifts and lifts until finally to 90 degrees, it gets easier and easier. What's recently changed that somehow now makes the T-bar a better choice for muscle growth? There's been some new studies that suggest that the T-bar might actually be a good option. First, there has been some data over the past couple decades, around 25 studies, comparing more shortened training to more lengthened training. This is actually the topic of my PhD, so let me break it down for you a little bit. When you're training a muscle group, one of the choices you have to make is what position you're going to train it in, right? You could train it through a full range of motion, getting the muscle fully lengthened, during a bicep curl, for example, going all the way to the bottom, and fully shortened, getting a peak contraction and a squeeze. Across 25 studies in the past couple of decades, it seems like that lengthened position is really important for hypertrophy. And so, as I mentioned earlier, a T-bar does two things. One, the resistance curve, because of the way the barbell moves, is such that it's hardest at the bottom of each rep when that muscle is lengthened, which, as we know from these studies, is good for hypertrophy. Second, for certain exercises, like the T-bar row, it actually limits the range of motion intrinsically by having a mechanical stop to the range of motion in that shortened position. And so one thing that's come out of the research is that when you compare lengthened partials, or doing partial range of motion repetitions in that lengthened range, those might actually be better for hypertrophy than a full range of motion. There's about five studies there. When you're doing a T-bar row, it is functionally a length and partial because you can't quite shorten the muscles as much as you'd want because the plates simply hit your torso before you get a full range of motion. And so the T-bar might actually have two components, the resistance curve and the range of motion that in light of new evidence, make it a better choice for hypertrophy than we previously thought. And in fact, even better than some barbell exercises. Indeed, by comparison, at this point, I would say the T-ball row is a better choice for back hypertrophy than the barbell row. And that's a pretty hot take, because recently the fitness industry has forgotten about the T-ball row as an exercise. There's been a lot of credibility given to the barbell row as a means to develop back density and other things, I guess. But the T-ball row has been forgotten about. And personally, based on these two factors, I think the T-ball row is a better option than the barbell row. Likewise, you could argue that the landmine lateral raise is better than a dumbbell lateral raise for the same reason. The resistance curve is simply more favorable in light of the lengthened position being pretty important for hypertrophy. The same goes for a goblet squat or a lunge performed with a landmine or a T-bar versus a dumbbell. Simply on account of the resistance curve involved, it may be better for hypertrophy. Another benefit of the T-bar is that it's a very cool piece of equipment for home gym lifters. The footprint of a T-bar is minimal. It's just a small little thing you put into the ground next to your rack and you have a whole new piece of equipment. And so for someone who's training at home who doesn't have the space for a lot of dumbbells or for a lot of machines, a T-bar can be a nice addition to your home gym that doesn't cost much, makes for a pretty solid hypertrophy option for the T-bar row, for example, for a goblet squat, for a lunge. So consider it. 
Now that I've sung the praises of T-Bar Rose to no end, let me give you a few caveats to why it might not be as good as I might have just made up, or just some limitations. First, it's actually kind of hard to set up. If you want to hit your upper chest, for example, do a kneeling T-Bar press, right, or a landmine press, you would need to get the weight into position first and then sit down or find some sort of way to get into position. So either you're not gonna be able to do it with very heavy weights for low reps, or it's simply gonna be awkward to get into position and a bit challenging as compared to like a barbell incline press or even a dumbbell incline press or a machine incline press. Those are simply a lot easier to get started with. Secondly, again, the fitness industry had issued this movement a little bit for a reason. It is not perfectly loadable. Compared to a barbell exercise or many machines or even dumbbells, you simply can't load it as heavily as dumbbells or barbells. You could simply do higher reps to circumvent this issue, but also for a lot of people, for a lot of exercises that might not use as heavy of a load, like the incline press or the kneeling landmine press, this might not even be an issue. Finally, while I'm saying that T-bar exercises are potentially superior to barbell exercises on account of the resistance curve of the length and partial, right? Like there's a mechanical stop when you row that barbell. This is relatively speculative. While the evidence is pretty convincing at this point that the length and position is super important, we haven't actually directly compared the T-bar row, for example, to a barbell row and measured back growth. My two favorite exercises on the T-bar for hypertrophy would probably have to be a T-bar row, as I mentioned, limits the range of motion in a shortened position and has a lengthened biased resistance curve, and the incline press, or the kneeling landmine press, hits the upper chest pretty effectively and does so with a lengthened biased resistance curve. So those two would probably be my go-to. That's the video. Let me give you a few quick takeaways. First, if you're training for hypertrophy, consider the T-bar. It's been long forgotten about, but it might have some benefits for muscle growth over the barbell. The T-bar in general is pretty slept on, especially within a home gym. It's got a really small footprint and offers you a lot of options as far as other exercises go that you wouldn't get with just the barbell and plates. Finally, the T-bar might be impractical for certain movements or certain things. So just keep that in mind, give it a shot, but certain exercises might not be ideal. That's the video. If you like this video, please comment, like, subscribe, donate to me so I can buy a T-bar from my own home. And I'll see you guys, my people, in that next one. Peace. Welcome back. Now real doctor, Milo Wolf here. Well, fuck, let me restart the video because I need to fucking change ways because I'm fucking more ways I found to do a flex for a culture.